at the lovely Theatre Royal Haymarket to meet the equally lovely Sonia Cassidy. Currently starring alongside Robert Lindsay and Joanna Lumley in The Lion in Winter, we find out exactly what it is that makes her a one to watch. Okay, so first question um, we're going to start with is, of course, how did you start? How did I start? Uh, I think the whole acting thing kind of manifests itself in school with me and my small group of very close friends. I was always the one in the group that would kind of be the joker, the one that would do the kind of the impressions of teachers, endearing impressions of teachers and doing accents and funny voices. And I always loved reading aloud and changing the voices of characters. And so I, yeah, I was kind of like the little impressionist in the group and it would sort of provide a lot of laughs. I think that's kind of where it really kicked off. I was quite shy though. I was never the sort of kid that was like, mum and dad give me loads of attention, you know, putting on shows in the living room or whatever, quite the opposite. But when I was given the chance to narrate something or read something or act something, that's when I kind of came alive more and kind of came out of my shell. So I think that's kind of where it started. And then my mum got my brother and I involved in a youth theatre in Bristol, close to where I lived. And that's kind of where I really got the bug for it, really. Uh, can you remember the first play that you performed in? The first play I ever performed in... Well, there was a production of A Christmas Carol at school, uh, and I was the narrator for that. Um, and I just loved the costumes, you know, it was all kind of very Dickensian and wonderful. Um, but that was at school. But then when I joined youth theatre when I was about 14, uh, that was with uh, a woman called Laura Wade. She was at university at the time in Bristol and she set up this youth theatre and she wrote this play for us. And so that was the first kind of amateur production I'd done in front of you know, a paying audience, you know, that wasn't a school show. And that was called The Last Child, about these women in a town um, that have lost all their children and um, they're working in this factory just trying to wait for their kids to come back, kind of Pied Piper-esque. Um, and so, yeah, that's when I sort of first had my first sort of proper acting experience. But Playbox, the theatre company that Laura set up, folded because she went to London to make it as a writer, she's done amazingly. So I joined the Bristol Old Vic Youth Theatre, which you had to audition for. Mm. And it was there that I did a play called Fuente Ovejuna, which is a Spanish play. And I had the lead role in that. And that was my first time doing a lead role. And it was from there that the people that ran the Youth Theatre and I and my parents sort of spoke about, okay, what's next? You know, I was doing my A-levels, drama school, tell us about it, because nobody else in my family acts, so it was quite a new chapter for us to embark on. So, so what yeah. was it that made you decide that you wanted to go to drama school, that it was the right decision for you? Uh, well, I was, I was quite a geek at school. <laughs> I, was quite, um, I was, yeah, very geeky at school, but acting was the thing that I had that real passion for and loved. You know, I was always the one in drama class where, you know, maybe other people think it was a bit of a cop-out. I'd be there like, come on guys, let's yeah. go, you know. I was very, very keen. You know, I could have gone to uni and done that and I'd have, you know, probably done well because I work hard mm. at anything I put my hand to, but that, I think I need to have that passion for it. I can't, otherwise I get bored very easily. Yeah, so we sought the advice of the people that ran the youth theatre and they said, you know, well, they saw the potential that I had, they'd seen me act, and they were like, well, we think you should apply to these schools because they'll stretch you and challenge you and make you, you know, the best you can be. I did my research, I looked at schools that had the kind of curriculum that I wanted to focus on, the ones that I thought would challenge me the most. For me personally, there are loads of really brilliant schools, but I knew I wanted it's RADA. Lovely. Yeah, yeah. I felt that it prepared me very well for, I guess, what every actor should and would like to be able to do, which is to do anything. So I think it has prepared me very well. But even before that, I mean, before I went to drama school, I had the passion for it and I loved playing different types of roles. Um, I don't like doing just the one thing, but I had no technique. But now drama school kind of fused those two and you feel much stronger as a performer to be able to take on any role.
So um, moving on, um, what about your first professional job? Uh, what was your first acting job when you came out of drama school? <clears throat> My first acting job was... It was an episode of Lewis. I had quite a nice run of, you know, those kind of TV series. I did a Lewis, I did a Doctors, which is great to do because the turnover on that is just yeah. immense. You get like two takes max, which for someone fresh out, you know, it's a lot of pressure, but mm -hmm. you're there, you're on the job. There's people that do it every day. So it's <clears> yeah. Like, okay, well, I yeah, yeah. You learn so much from the people that have been regulars on those shows. For years, you know, their experience is incredible. So that's great as a young student fresh out of drama school to just kind of sit back and watch what other people are doing as well, to get to know a TV set and how it works and little things like hitting your marks and stuff. So actually it was extremely valuable to get a job like that fresh out because you're not thrown right into it. You're not, you know, suddenly playing a massive role with not much TV experience, yeah. you know, you're able to kind of watch and learn and that was yeah. really, that was really good. How did you become involved with Inherit the Wind um, last no. year? Inherit, I, my agent, you know, heard about it. I was called in, I auditioned for Trevor, it was two rounds. As soon as I got the script, I just, you know, I went back into sort of, sort of Sonia geek mode and as I always do I try and do as much research as possible because um, I think it's so important if you've got the time to do all of that and I think also for theatre where you are sometimes blessed with the time of being able to sit and talk to a director about the part which I love um, you have to know what you're talking about you have to have an idea of what you think the character should be but also be prepared to change it you know you can't set it in stone I was, you know, obviously extremely nervous, but just really excited as well. And I knew how badly I wanted it. So I just kind of thought, well, just go and give it 100% and then let it go, see what happens. And then I got a recall, which was so exciting. I can imagine. Um, and it was, you know, a blessing, you know, Trevor Nunn, the play I loved, the venue is incredible to work with Kevin. Mm. I mean, just so many things. And to be playing a lead role, Definitely. you so know, young, was such, so. yeah, was such... Um, such an honour. And again, I was just so up for it. So I was like, Could you ever stop smiling? <laughs> no, <laughs> the no. Night, I was, the biggest yeah, night. yeah. No, I was just on cloud nine the whole time, really. And now time. you're working with Mr. Trevor Nunn again. Yep. Um, can you tell us a little bit about The Lion in Winter? Yes, it's uh, written by a man called James Goldman. He wrote it in the 60s, but it's set in the 12th century, in 1183. And it's quite anachronistic in the sense that, you know, there's quite a lot of modern elements. The language is very modern, um, but it's set in this beautiful stage designed by Stephen Brinson and Lewis. Yeah, and it's basically a family Christmas. And the three boys of the king are fighting over who is going to inherit the throne. And I am playing uh, King Henry's mistress. King Henry is played by Robert Lindsay. Joanna Lumley is playing the, you know, incredible Eleanor of Aquitaine who is the wife of Henry. I'm in love with Henry. I don't want to be married off to any of his sons, so I'm kind of fighting to keep him. But also there's this kind of very strange, kind of touching, heartbreaking, feudal relationship with Eleanor because she was kind of like a mother to me, but since she's been away and locked up by Henry for starting a civil war, I've not really seen her and I've started a relationship with him. So it's, there's there's, that brilliant blend of drama and quite dark humour as well. I think the humour kind of catches people off guard, which I love because it, they're very like raw and biting. I mean, it's like verbal knives all the time. It's just brilliant, brilliant entertainment because you're watching people that love and hate each other. So it's, um, it's plenty to keep an actor and an audience on their toes. But yeah, quite simply, it's, you know, a play set at Christmas and a family coming together. So how do you go about researching a role like this? I mean, it's obviously based in history, but it's yep. very, very fictional at the same time. Yeah, it's good to know kind of what elements are helpful and what aren't. So I'll just research the historical facts, first of all. But then you also need to look at the play and what the writer wants of the play. Um, so I'll look into the playwright, you know, why they wrote it then. And also, then when you get in the rehearsal room, you know, it's 
the director's job and Trevor is like a human encyclopedia so mm. geek that I am Trevor always yeah. knows you know everything so that's a real comfort to know that you're in a room with someone that absolutely knows what they're talking about and that if there's anything you're not sure of you can bet pretty good money that Trevor will know it so but also then you can't before you're in a rehearsal room do so much that you kind of set your own ideas you know you've got to go in you don't know what the director wants to do with the piece you don't know what the other actors you're going to be with a light that will inform that how much of it is going to be very factual how much of it is going to be kind of tweaked for entertainment and adjusted so you have to I just like to do as much as I can make as many notes as possible and then kind of go in with that behind me to help fuel whatever you do in the piece but also ready to change it and take on board what the director says, really. Oh, fantastic. I suppose the Haymarket is a pretty amazing venue to perform in. How are you finding that? Oh, loving it. Absolutely loving it. And as I say, for this play, to be performing in such a gorgeous old mm -hmm. theatre, a real traditional yeah. theatre with so much character to it is amazing it, you know again it's a cloud nine job you never take it for granted got a fantastic cast behind you as well oh I mean, incredible just looking at everyone's credentials mm. all, all the young actors are yeah. all fantastic and then you've got big names like robert Lindsay and joanna, and joanna yeah. how is it acting with them on stage is it again you just see it as a professional job it's a bit like trevor and <laughs> yeah <old> Trev. <laughs> Trev. um as i say i don't i don't take it for granted and it's such a wonderful opportunity to learn from people like Robert and Joanna that have been in the industry for so long that are so skilled at what they do and so versatile and such lovely people so down to earth and funny you know if in rehearsals they'd make the odd mistake which we all do that's mm -hmm. the point of rehearsals you know they'd laugh at themselves and it's just yeah you just feel very very lucky so I bet you're very, very busy with this show at the moment. But have you got any other projects on the side at the moment? Or are you just focusing on this? I, just as we hit previews, I was finishing shooting a series up in Newcastle. So the beginning of the show was really um, very busy. Very, mm. very busy. Which is, I mean, a wonderful position to be in, to have two jobs on the go. Um, but that was the new series of Vera for ITV with mm. the lovely... Brenda Blethyn and David Leon um, and I'm a new series regular in that so I started shooting that just before I got this job and ITV and Trevor were so lovely with making it work with rehearsals yeah. and going up so yeah. so yeah you've got this big checklist of amazing people you've already worked with like mm -hmm. huge inspirational figures I mean Trevor number one yeah is there anyone yeah. else you'd like to add to that list in particular Really, like, as I say, I'm kind of open. There's so many wonderful people in the industry that you can learn from, um, from actors to directors, producers, writers. You know, I think it's good. I try and pace myself. I am very ambitious and very driven. But, you know, you kind of, you want to be acting when you're a pensioner. And hopefully, you know, that's, yeah. that's the hope. And so I'm so pleased with everything so far. It's been a good, slow, steady burn. And I'd much prefer that and for it to hopefully have some longevity. Um, so who knows? It's all very exciting. Fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. Best very of luck for everything. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're excited now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.